Hey everyone, welcome to Bickering Book Reviews. I'm Sarah. And I'm Becky. And so today we're doing something new we thought we'd try out. Um, we have a blog that we write every day. So if you don't follow us on the blog, come find us and follow us. Um, but on the blog, every Monday we do a mock list for Newberry, Caldecott, and Prince. I probably should have said it in a different way because of age levels, but that's what we do. Anyway, we thought we'd bring our mock list to you on YouTube. It's so totally we're going to... It's fantasy football team. It is our fantasy football team. <laughs> I mean, it, it, but, like, it's still gelling. Like, it's, mine's still coming together because I'm, like, right. not... I'm, like, I'm hesitant about my current mocks. Well, and we but, start worrying about mocks, like, the day after the awards are announced. And so, like, you really don't figure it out until, like, November or December, right? Like, November and December, you're, like, like you have those ones that you, you know are going to win. Yeah, and I, I don't have that yet. But no. they're good books. But I have, I, I, one of my Newberries, I really would be surprised if it's not on a list somewhere. But okay. Okay. So, anyway, this round, we are going to be going over our current list of mock Newberry books. Um, so we have six titles. We'll give you a kind of a little synopsis of them. And um, you can let us know what is on your mock list now because we're still looking because I don't think we've found a winner yet. I don't know if I, I think we're winner. Got some, I think we've got some strong contenders. I think we might have some honor books, but I don't know if I have a winner. But if but you who know, know, if you like, if you think you know, let us know so we can read it. I know, seriously, though. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my first um, book that I chose on my mock list, and it is called Show Me a Sign by Anne Claire Lazat. And so this was actually kind of fascinating historically um, because it's set in Martha's Vineyard in the 1800s, and it's about Mary, whose town um, has a high population of deaf people, so they use sign language and spoken language interchangeably. And basically things have started happening around the island where outsiders are coming in to try to figure out like why there's such a high population of the deaf community and then also kind of settlers versus um, native people are having issues. Um, I think that it should be part of the discussion. I certainly think this should be part of a classroom um, curriculum because it is so fascinating. There's so much to it. Um, it does move quickly and shines a light on lesser known history. Um, it's, I'm, I love the fact that it's got deaf history and it's an own voices perspective. Um, the plot and characters were solidly built and the research was present, but not off putting. So I think the pieces were well put together. Like, so it's a strong novel. So my first title is Black Brother, Black Brother by Jewel Parker Rhodes. I loved this book. I read it back in January, and I feel like every day it becomes more and more relevant. It's about Dante Ellison. He goes to the Boston prep, uh, um, to an elite prep school in Boston. He, his mother is African American. His father is Caucasian. He is dark skinned like his mother. His brother is light skinned and passes for being Caucasian. And basically, one day at school, Dante gets blamed for something, and um, it escalates very, very quickly, and there's some police brutality, and he gets basically thrown in jail. Like, the police come. He's, like, 12. Gets put in jail. And he um, is trying to figure out, like, what happened to him and deal with that. And he connects with a African-American gentleman who had been on the American fencing, Olympic fencing team, and he learns to fence. And it was just, it's, first of all, it's very beautifully written. It's very poetically written. The, the pacing, the formatting is gorgeous. It addresses a lot of those issues that young African-American men are dealing with. Plus, it really, really talks about the inequality in Olympic sports. And it just all came together so beautifully. I really would be surprised if it doesn't make the list. I can agree with that. It was... It'll be on a list somewhere, I think. Like, even if it doesn't get Newberry, it will definitely be on Coretta Scott King. Yeah, I just would be shocked if it doesn't get Newberry um, honors. But no, I think it's definitely going to get something on Coretta Scott King. And it was, just, it was just like the way it was written. It's a really quick book. It's, it's perfect for those kids who need to read it. 
Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so now our third mock on the list is Clean Getaway by Nick Stone. So this is the first, I think her first middle grade, and if it's not her first middle grade, it's the first middle grade by her that I've read. And so this is about Scoob and his grandmother who go on an unannounced road trip. Um, basically, back in the day when the Green Book was important and necessary for African Americans traveling across the United States, um, Scoob's grandmother and his grandfather were taking a trip across the United States. And his grandmother is white and his grandfather is African American. And so basically, as she's kind of, her mental faculties are getting a little sketchy. And so I think as like a last ditch effort, she's taking this trip across the country and kind of finishing what she started and scoops along for the ride and um, just kind of learning about different pieces and parts of the South and what life was like, you know, living during that time, but also kind of finding his own voice alongside his grandmother and his um, super overprotective father. So Stone is a solid writer. She always has been. She always, I, I feel like she always will be. Um, it has, the narrative voice is spot on and it represents the tone of voice um, for this character. So I think, I think it's really kind of the tone of voice that kind of pushes it to Newberry territory. So my next choice is From the Desk of Zoe Washington by Janae Marks. And Zoe Washington is a 12-year-old girl who's dealing with some really big issues. There's an issue with her former best friend who has kind of betrayed her in a way. And she's been being raised her whole life by her mother and her stepfather. She receives a letter from her father who is in prison. And they start to communicate. And her father basically tells her he's in prison for a murder he didn't commit. And so Zoe gets convinced that she's going to figure it out and she's going to solve and get him and get him out of prison, solve what really happened and get him out of prison. Um, it's just this, it was, first of all, the narrative voice is very honest. Like it does, you believe everything Zoe believes. You can see why she's doing this, but it also addresses the innocence project. And it's a really great way to introduce that idea to kids. And it really does talk about the, um, prejudice in the legal system and how because her father was an african-american man people assumed he did it it also talks about um the way she and her caucasian stepfather are treated and even though that this is the person who is her dad like people in the community just kind of like look at them funny and like why does he, why is she with him and that kind of stuff but it's just a really great honest book and it's her first book and that's really impressive yeah, it was really well done. Okay, so then here is my last um, novel on my mock list so far, and it is The One and Only Bob by Catherine Applegate. Um, this is the sequel to The One and Only Ivan. And I actually listened to this, and Danny DeVito reads the book. So if you're looking for an interesting audiobook, like this is definitely um, one to pick up. So this novel follows Bob the dog. Um, each of our animals' fr friends from the first novel, they found new homes and um, built new family relationships. And Bob found his forever home and is still able to visit Ivan and Ruby, Ivan the gorilla and Ruby the elephant. Um, his town has begun to prepare to be hit by a hurricane, and some, there are some serious concerns about keeping everyone safe. Um, as Bob is helping out, he hears a bark from his past and goes on a journey to find the dog that belongs to the sound. Family comes from all directions, and Bob is going to try to com complete his family. Um, as with her first novel, Applegate shows her talents with writing. Descriptions and characters are well-developed and unique. Bob's voice is as distinct as Ivan's was. So my last book is Here in the Real World by Sarah Pennypacker, who I feel like she is on a lot of mock lists. Like, almost every year she's got a new book that is all the buzz. And this book is about Ware, who is, I believe he's going into fifth grade. He was supposed to spend the summer with his grandmother and her retirement community, but she falls and breaks her hip. And so he has to go home, and his parents want him um, 
to spend the summer going to this like local community center drop-in care and he hates it there it's too loud there's too much stuff going on it's just not good times so he kind of sneaks away and he finds this girl who's working an empty lot next door who's trying to build a garden um and he decides he's going to help her and he's trying because he always wanted to be a knight and so he was trying to live out the lessons of what a knight would be and it's about their friendship and about growing up and this is this is another one of those books that the narrative voice is very realistic like this is another where you can really see how kids would relate to it but it has a lot to talk about with like economic issues and the girl from the empty lot named jolene she's being raised by her aunt who has an alcohol problem and so there's just a lot of like coming of age issues that you see in a lot of newberry books so that is what we have so far we will be back now that the library's back open, like, I went through all of the places where I get my mock Newberries from, because, like, SLJ, our school library journal, has a really great heavy metal blog, so I'll look at those. Um, Goodreads has some good ones. I, there are definitely others that I use, I just can't recall off the top of my head. But what I typically do is I'll just, like, order them all and read through them. So I've got a whole bunch of books coming to me. So we'll see, we'll see what rises to the top with that and we will let you know. yeah and we'll let you know and if you like i said like we said earlier if you have any if you have any suggestions or anything that's on your mock list definitely put it in the comments so we we know about it too all right so see ya bye